Working on these uh, brakes here on this 2017 Ford F-150. Uh, this does not have the power brake, uh, emergency brake on the back. It's just regular brakes all the way around. Um, this is a XLT Sport 4x4 with the EcoBoost engine. Uh, right off the bat, I'm going to show you the tools that you're probably going to need for the job and we'll run over some uh, torque specs just in case you're looking for torque specs. So some stuff that you're going to need. 21mm socket to get the wheels off and the anchor bolts. I have a 21mm flex for the anchor bolts. The caliper themselves, 13mm. Uh, the anchor bolts in the back, 18mm. And the, uh, the banjo bolts for the calipers are 12mm. So, uh, you also want some torque wrenches if you're going to be torquing stuff down. Pry bar and a hammer for taking off uh, the calipers and also removing brake pads. And then some power tools if you want power tools or use ratchets or wrenches, whatever your preference is. This to push back calipers if you want, or if you have a nice kit, you can use a kit as well. Um, and you might want a uh, coat hanger, bungee cord, whatever, hold the calipers up. Torque specs for the front. So the anchor bolts that are 21 millimeter, 184 foot pounds. Now they do say to discard the bolt and replace them. Uh, the front caliper, 13 millimeter bolts. That's the two that hold the caliper on, 27 foot pounds. You can reuse those. The, the uh, banjo bolt for the caliper, it's a 12 mil. 26 foot pounds is the torque. Uh, they want you to discard and reuse the washers. Now for the back brakes, uh, if it has no power emergency brake, or yeah, power uh, emergency brake, the anchor bolts are 111 foot pounds. Discard the bolt. With power emergency brake, um, the anchor bolts are 181 foot pounds. Also discard the bolt. The rear banjo, uh, 26 foot pounds, discard washers. Uh, for the calipers, if you have no power uh, parking brake, the caliper bolts are 24 foot pounds and you can reuse the bolts. But if it does have a power parking brake in the back on the caliper, it's 27 foot pounds and you have to discard and reuse the bolts. The wheels are 150 foot pounds. Discard in place. No, not for the wheel nuts. You said discard and reuse. Sorry, sorry, discard and replace. That's what I meant to say. Anytime I say discard, discard on there. Yeah, just throw them out and get a new one. So that's what they want. I don't know. I'm sure millions of people around the world reuse them. Anyhow, let's get started on this, shall we? So first things first, got to get the wheels off. You can see I've already done that. Then we want to take our calipers off. Um, like I say, this one without the power parking brake. Uh, very simple, you just, like every other car in the world, you just take the, the bolts out there, the 213s, we're gonna remove these to access our brake pads and our anchors, and we'll get those off. If you do have parking brakes in the back, like the power parking brakes, there's a service procedure. Um, go check out somebody else's video. I don't have a video on it, and I don't have a truck with power parking brakes, so I can't make a video. But um, probably have to use a scan tool. There might be some way to go through the truck and do it, I don't know but uh, you gotta do that procedure before you take them off so that you can change the pads and yada, yada, yada. So I'm gonna get zipping these things off and uh, we'll see you in a second. Sometimes the bolts get stuck in here and these pins will just spin around and spin around. You can stick a wrench on there or use like needle nose vice grips. All right, so we can see here, we got the uh, calipers off, this is the anchor. Slider pins, they should move free. Hopefully they're not seized. Brake pads. Now, you can see this disc doesn't look too bad on the outside, but I guarantee you that the inside looks absolutely terrific. I mean, terrible. Um, the, uh, the brake pads are completely seized in there. They should be able to slide freely, but of course they're seized. The, uh, I'm sure these brakes have never been serviced. Um, Maybe they've been serviced when the, the customer bought the truck. I don't know. But um, we're going to get these off, and I'll show you just what happens. You get rust that builds up underneath the here and on the tips of the pads. And they just get stuck in there, and then they can't move back off. And uh, also the brake performance when the caliper starts to push on the brake pads themselves. You don't get full pressure. And uh, they just feel like crap. They destroy your rotors. Poor performance. They heat up. And... Uh, they wear out prematurely so 21 millimeter bolts on the back for these anchors i'm gonna buzz those out with the uh 
flex socket that I have with the impact gun, that's real quick. And then for the backs, like I say, they're 18 millimeter. I'll see if I can get in there with a the gun. Might have to use a ratchet. If you want to hang these up with a bungee cord or whatever, go for it. I'm just gonna let them hang there. I'm sure somebody's gonna comment. So all of this stuff is just rust that builds up. Like, especially after it sits over the nighttime and you get a little surface of rust on there and the brake pads get stuck. And when you drive down the road and apply the brakes for the first time, the pads can't push in on the rotors enough to heat up and get rid of that rust. So it just kind of compacts it and creates a fine layer. And every day that creates more and more of a layer. And then eventually it just uh, delaminates and it looks like it has a surface, but really underneath it's just rust. So this is, this rotor is completely junk. You can see all the rust scale. That rust scale also gets inside of these fins and the, uh, the rotor loses its cooling properties. It can't cool down enough and uh, it ends up overheating and warping the metal. Once it gets distorted, you get a, a thumping in the brake pedal. Now, like I say, these things get seized in there real bad. These should just come right out, but they don't. So you end up having to beat them out with a hammer and like that's still not even out and uh, you can see i've hit it so hard now that the uh, actual friction material has separated because they just glue it on to the steel backing plate and uh, they're junk anyways but just go to show if you uh, try to service your brakes or something and you've left it too long sometimes you can't even get the brake pads out without destroying them so that sucks but uh, yeah basically got to hammer these out I'm going to take the, uh, the back ones off right now. I'll get all the anchors lined up here. We'll get the pads out of them and I'll show you a bit of a service procedure on what you should do to service these anchors before we go ahead and uh, reassemble. It really sucks when these get stuck on because the backing plate's in the way. If the backing plate wasn't there, you could just, you know, home run it, but you can't do that. So before you go to try to take these off, the ones that don't have the electronic parking brake, the shoes are inside of here parking brake shoes so there's two slots underneath thankfully they're located on the bottom unlike dodge where they put one on one side that's on the bottom and the other one's on the top so they're easy to get to now there's an adjuster that's in there that you need to back off to retract the shoes back as far as you can so that you can get the rotor off um there's a starred wheel that sits in behind that slot and it turns either one way or the other so they both turn the same way on the driver's side when you're looking through the view window you want the wheel to spin this way so you're gonna stick your tool in there whether you use an actual brake tool or you just use a flathead screwdriver they both work fine you're just going to, uh, like I say, driver's side, you're gonna go in there and you're gonna be turning the wheel down. And then when you're on the passenger side, looking through the view window, you're gonna be turning the wheel up. And that will, uh, once you do that a bunch, the shoes will back off and you'll know that you've gone the right way because they'll be, uh, you'll be able to move them back and forth. If you've tightened them all the way, the disc will be solid. It won't be able to move back and forth like that. So um the next thing is there's a lot of rust that builds up i'll show you on this other disc over here real quick why they get stuck on there but it's all because of rust so the rust builds up on a spot that, that the uh, shoes do not contact so right here you can see where the shoes have been running right in there and up to about here and then this big rust ridge forms so when you try to pull your uh, disc off the shoes get caught up on that rust lip and it wants to pull the emergency brake shoes off with the backing plate and a lot of times what will happen is it might just yank the friction material off and break it off because it's just glued onto this metal backing plate just like we seen in the beginning of the video or there's uh steel pins that go through the backing plate to anchor the shoes to the backing plate and sometimes it'll just rip the hardware right off with it so it's one of those things you fight with it and fight with it. You got to devote your time to get the thing off anyway. So do the best that you can. Make sure that the uh, um, emergency brakes are backed off all the way. And then just try your best to get them off. I'm using a rubber mallet. 
it doesn't really matter. You could use a hammer. Uh, yeah, if they're crappy rotors and you're replacing them, who cares if you mark them up? If you are going to reuse them, then uh, I'd recommend like putting a block of wood, maybe a little two by four in front of that where you hit it. So just start hammering, man. You got to get it off. Okay, so I got it off, took a lot of beating, um, but it did pull the pins out through the back. So what happens is I'm gonna put pins in it. These clips are nice because you can just stick the pin in and slip them up in. There's different styles of these clips where you have to like push in on a spring and turn them and it's just a pain in the ass, but I'm just gonna reuse these, that's fine. The issue is that the backing plate metal where the hole is, the pin has gotten pulled through the metal. So what happens is it just mushrooms out the hole now when you go to put a new pin in it's probably just gonna get pulled through so two things you can do you can either remove the shoes and try to flatten the backing plate back out or you can stick a washer in behind put that on the pin first and then stick that on the backing plate so that it can't come through i've done that many times nothing wrong with it uh, emergency brakes work fine afterwards um yeah these shoes are pretty hurting, they're very rusty, but uh, the guy uh, obviously doesn't use them. It looks like they've never been used. It's like anybody that drives an automatic, you never use your emergency brakes. It's very rare. But uh, these luckily did not rip the linings off. If it was a Dodge, the linings would have been gone. Like, it wouldn't have mattered. The rotor would come right off. The linings would just fall off as soon as you look at them. So, um, yeah, I'm just gonna get some pins. We'll fix that up. Now that we got all the discs off, we're ready to push our calipers back. And we want to clean up the surfaces of our hubs, make sure all the rust is off of them, so that when the new discs go on, both of those mating surfaces are true, and we don't have a bunch of rust on one side and none on the other, causing the disc to sit crooked. Driving down the road, it would run untrue, and that would give you a thumping brake pedal, brake pedal pulsation. So we don't like that. Um, if you are using like channel lock style uh, pair of pliers to push back your pistons, just be very careful. You, I would use uh, one of the old brake pads and stick it in there and just push on that because this metal is very, very hard and it's also very brittle. So usually they put like a, almost an outer casing or a shell around the metal itself. I don't know if it's like a ceramic or what it is, but if you get pushing on it with your uh, channel lock pliers, there's a good chance you could fracture it. And then the rubber O-ring that's inside that seals may not seal and you could have a brake fluid leak and uh, it's very dangerous. So just be careful when you do that, take your time and uh, use an old brake pad if you have it, if that's the way you're gonna do it. If you have the, the real tool, proper tool to do it, then uh, sweet, carry on. All right, so there's the hole. You can see it back in there all uh, mushroomed out. Now, I was just gonna stick a washer in there, but the pins that I have aren't long enough, so I can't afford to lose that real estate. And uh, I'm gonna have to just try to sneak in there and see if I can't flatten that back out just enough. Get those uh, straightened back out just as, as good as I can get them. It should work just fine. Um, I guess one more thing you should do also before you put the discs on is that star adjuster that's underneath that we adjusted to get the uh, shoes to back off. Um, there it is, it's located right there above the spring. Um, just up in there. And it uh, wouldn't hurt to put some spray lube or something on that because those have a tendency of seizing up. They uh, never see service and uh, if they seize up on you and you have to take the rotor off and they're fully adjusted out, good luck. You're basically gonna have to get a sledgehammer and uh, just rip these things off. I've had times where I've had to cut the pins off to relieve some pressure and just smoke them off.
All right, so we have uh, just a little bit of room there to sneak a clip in. There's two styles of clips. These ones have like a ball end on them, and that's the kind that you need. You can see once this is in there, this, uh, it slips up in, and uh, not only does it retain the shoe against the backing plate, but it also acts as a spring as well. So it's a two for one combo. The trick is getting them in there. Uh, they're not bad if you have uh, the right set of pliers, you can probably get in there, but if you only have your hands, it might be a bit of cursing, I swear. So they're shorter. Now they look skinnier, but uh, they're really, really rusty. So they've probably lost a little bit of size. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get these on. Okay, so pretty much like that. And then, um, can you pass me that pry bar that's over there? In and down. Yep. I can't tell if that's on or not. Oh, yeah, baby. That's it. Okay. So, a bit of a trick to it. Like I say, you got to hold the pin. At the same time, you have to compress that spring while it's ready to slip down. And then you got to hit it on the top to like lock it in place. So, a pair of pliers in the stomach, compress it, hold the pin in the back, jab it with the pry bar. So, I might have to, uh, I might have to like put something in there and just beat the backing plate out this way a little bit to gain myself a little oh, bit of room. Yeah. All right, so the little here's a little tip for you. If you're doing what I'm doing here and you need to gain a little extra room on that pin, there's a big bracket that's in behind here that the whole backing plate bolts onto. It's part of the uh, diff tube. Um, what you can do is use something like this and slide it into the hole where the pin goes into and then put a pry bar in behind here and give it a, a yank and uh, it'll bend the backing plate a little bit outwards and uh, give you a little bit more room with the pin, so. Oh, I don't know if I can do this side. Oh yeah, I can. Okay, you gotta like whack that thing. I can't, you can hold that with your gut. Oh, right. Hold on, I can't because you're in the way. Close. Atta boy. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's how we do it in the professional industry right there. Just get your cameraman to do it. Yeah, cameraman. <laughs> Woo! Uh, just wash off the discs before we install them. A lot of times what they'll do is uh, just put oil on them before they package them to keep them from rusting. And it's important that we get that oil off because if you don't, it contaminates the brake pads and it can give you crappy performance it can cause noises all kinds of stuff so um now i did clean this hub got all the rust and stuff off of it and then i actually uh, applied a light film of uh honey goo by a company called clean flow and uh i was very careful not to get any on the studs the uh studs need to stay clean and dry now uh, what you can do once you install these, if you want to just keep them in place and keep them from flopping around, just throw a wheel nut on there. Um, that's going to keep the disc nice and centered. So when you go to install the bracket or the anchor with the pads, it'll just slide right on. You put your bolts in, you're not fighting it with the disc. So just going to do this one. 
and uh, I'll wash up the back ones and throw them on and we'll set up the rear uh, emergency brakes. Okay, so now we're gonna set up the uh, emergency brakes. Now this backing plate gets real rusty, so before I installed those uh, discs, I did clean all the rust and stuff off, and then you can spin the disc and make sure that nothing contacts, that's all good. So inside this window, uh, we are now going to spin the star. Um, if you're looking at the front of the vehicle on the driver's side, we're going to be spinning it counterclockwise. And what you wanna do is you just get in there and start spinning it. And eventually it'll tighten up as the shoes uh, max out on the inside of the hat for the rear disc. And once they max out, then what we can do is go back the other way and loosen them off just a little bit until uh, they're no longer contacting, but they're pretty much right there. So as soon as you apply the parking brake, it takes up no travel and brake pedal, parking brake pedal. Okay, so now we're going the other way. So I probably went I don't know, three or four teeth, which isn't very much, but just enough. Feel the rotor as you're loosening it off, and then uh, and we're good to go. So. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. Might, like I say, even though both adjuster holes are on the bottom, the uh, Star adjusters are not mirror image. They both go the same way. So just how we had to go counterclockwise to tighten on that side, we also need to go counterclockwise on this star, except now we're facing the other way. So instead of going uh, up with the, with the wheel, we wanna be going uh, down. So I'm gonna be grabbing it at the top and, and pulling it down. All right, so we got the tool here, um, and yeah, real simple. It's just a threaded thing with the backing plate. You can pick uh, different attachments depending on the caliper. Now it doesn't, this is for like doing pushback and windback style calipers, but it's just a pushback. So like I say, you could use like big channel locks if you wanted to, but this is the proper tool to do the job. So that's what it looks like, this little cup is stepped, it sits inside the piston, and then uh, this plate just pushes up against the, the ears, and uh, it's pretty straightforward. So go around and do that to all of the calipers. We wanna push them back all the way. And then uh, I'll show you what we're gonna do to clean the anchors. So this caliper is seized up. Um, you got a lot of rust that gets in past of this uh, boot here that protects the piston from the bore, uh, from rust getting in there, but uh, it got compromised, rust got in there and it's seized up now. So I just wanna push this back so that I can get the brake pads in, put the wheel on, and put a cal caliper on it tomorrow morning, but uh, it's like 11 o'clock at night right now and nowhere is open. So I just wanna get this thing back. Uh, this tool will not, it's not strong enough to push it back. So this is the next weapon of choice. It should do the job. It's either gonna go back or it's gonna explode one or the other. So just stick this on here and then uh, probably do one of these, something like that. And then we'll just start cranking it down. And if we need more leverage, we can just get this bar, put that in there too. The trick is to just hold the thing so that it's not flopping around like fish out of water. Okay, so next thing now, what we have to do is prepare these brackets or what Ford calls anchors. And uh, we just have to give them a little bit of service before we go ahead and install these pads. So you know how these pads are super tight? Those should move freely in there. And like I say, the reason for that is rust. The rust builds up underneath of these clips that are in here. 
and also on the ends of the brake pads as well. And then it puts a lot of pressure on the brake pad so that it can't move anymore, and that's no good. So we gotta take our clips off, and usually they're just stuck on there, so you can just use a pry bar or something, or a screwdriver. And once we get those out, then we have to clean underneath of here. Now, most brake pads come with new clips, but some of them don't. So just be careful before you mangle these things and rip them out. Make sure that you have new clips, or if you don't, you uh, carefully take these out because you got to reuse them. And then what we want to do is clean them so you can either use a sandblaster, wire wheel, I don't care, use your sister's nail file. Um, and then once we get it cleaned up, the next thing we got to do is service these slides. Now these ones are in half decent shape, they're not seized, but you can see the rust is starting to attack by the, uh, the boot there. And once the seal gets compromised, moisture gets inside these pins um, in the bores and they uh, get a bunch of rust in there and they seize up and then they just stick and they don't slide anymore. And what happens then is the caliper is supposed to float on those pins and when it can't do that, it can only use the side with the pistons in the caliper and not the outer side pad. So it just uses one brake pad and uh, it'll smoke the inside brake pad off in no time and the outside brake pad will look brand new. So it's very important these get uh, freed up if they're stuck or service them. So uh, I'm gonna take all this stuff apart, pull these clips out, throw them out, got new ones. I'm gonna sandblast just in here and in here. And uh, I'll probably just use a wire wheel and clean up around here, put brush lube in. I use copper anises for here underneath of the clips and on top of the clips and the ends of the brake pads. And then for the slides themselves, because there's rubber here, I use this stuff, Easy Slide. It's a silicone based uh, brake lubricant slash dielectric grease. It's safe for rubber. It won't cause rubber to swell. This stuff and a lot of other products are a petroleum based product and they will cause the rubber to swell over time. And uh, that's not good either because that will also compromise the seal in the bore and uh, right then back again to rust and no good. So get to clean it. So what happened there? The uh, rust built up so bad on the back side of the rotor, which the rotor looked pretty good by the way on the front side. Besides the rust ridge on the outside, but the customer thought that, you know, they, they look pretty decent. But really on the back side, they're completely trash. And you can't see because the backing plate's in the way. But the rust builds up and uh, the brake pads are seized in the holders so bad that they, they couldn't clean the rust off and the rust just keeps building up and building up. Then eventually you just choose the pad up. All right, so we got these cleaned up. You can see I've sandblasted these surfaces here. That's where the pads sit in. Also, um, these are a little bit different, so they run two styles of clips. And then um, I've also sandblasted these mounting surfaces so that they're nice and uh, flush. And also just around the pins as well, to try to keep some of the rust off around like where the rubber is. Um, one thing to note with these pads, the front brake pads, there is actually inner and outer based on where the caliper piston sits. And uh, they do have an orientation of left and right hand side as well. The back ones though, they are the same. Doesn't matter if you got them inside, outside, left, right, as long as they're on the back. So. Okay, so we do have uh, some copper anti-seize. That's the, uh, the stuff that I like to use. You can use many different uh, um, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so we got uh, our bolts started there. I'm just going to go around and install all the cradles, or the, I forget what they call them, uh, back onto uh, their homes, onto the knuckles, and we'll torque them all down, and then we can go ahead and get our brake pads in there. All right, so we got our bolts torqued down there that hold our anchors on. At 184 foot pounds and I have applied a little bit of 
copper anti-seize on the tips of the uh, pads there. You can see nice and free. That's the way we want it. And uh, now we can stick this brake caliper back on. We have our pistons pushed back. It's up to you at this point whether you want to install some anti-seize underneath of these fingers. Some people like to do that. Some people don't. And we'll get our bolts started for our calipers. Those bolts get torqued down to 27 foot-pounds that hold the caliper on. Okay, so we do 111 on the back for the ones without the, the electronic uh, parking brake. Okay. All the brakes are together, everything's torqued. Double check that everything looks the way it's supposed to look. Now we can put our wheels on. Um, on this truck, the wheel that's gonna wear the most is the passenger side rear wheel. That's like your main drive wheel. So uh, put the best tire there. I would rotate the Tires with the least amount of tread onto the front, the ones with the most on the back. I know the ones on the back, the most most goes on the passenger rear. And we'll get all these nuts started. And uh, once we get those zipped down, we're gonna lower this thing down and torque them down to 150 foot pounds. All right guys, once you get uh, everything done here and you get all your wheels torqued up, don't forget to uh, pump up your brake pedal before you put the truck into drive or reverse because we need to get those calipers uh, all ready to go so that you got some brakes. But uh, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, throw them down in the comments below. I'd be glad to answer any of your questions. If you like this content, subscribe, give the video a thumbs up, and uh, we'll catch you in the next one.